good morning. This is my first time using this mold. I made a sack of dried flowers. It's time to unmold it. So here we go. It's cloudy today. We might get some rain in a day or two. We'll see. I'm just roll, I'm just rolling it down. Well, just roll it on down. And show you a little trick. See, when you've got something like this, like it has a neck in it, just kind of twist it. Pull and twist it. Sometimes that helps. Or not. Well, uh, one more now. Well, it should come off eventually. <laughs> Boy, howdy. It don't want to let go. It's going to have to. Uh, mm. Good night, Charlie Brown. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Come on now. Oh, there we go. Now, look at that. We've got a sack full of flowers. And there's a little feather in there. See that feather? That's from our parakeets. Sack full of dried flowers. If I can turn this where there's not so much glare on it, maybe. Well, I put some real leaves in it from our tree, along with a few dried flowers. kind of dark. You can't see it too good, huh? Kind of dark in here. Well, anyway, there's that. And now, I got some other stuff I can unmold that I poured up last, last yesterday evening. I put this back like it goes. All right, let me get that other stuff. Wait till you see it. Well, I should. How about that? And how about this? And how about these? Well, this is a lid that's going to go on this. See how I did the lid? I poured, uh, first I poured uh, some clear around its edges where I put in some uh, little, little brown beads and some uh, glow-in-the-dark little pebbles. And here we go. Here we go. Back here. Okay, get it started. Start peeling on it. I hadn't planned on making a solid white uh, dish, but the other day I had some leftover white and I didn't want to waste it, so I grabbed that white bowl and poured it into that. So I thought, well, now I have to make a white dish. 
So I spiffed it up a little with the brown beads and the glow in the dark stuff. <clears throat> now. And there we go. Here's the bottom of it. And you can see the brown beads in it. And it's got the glow-in-the-dark pebbles in there. It looks quilted, don't it, with this design. It's quilted. So here's this, and then you put your, put your bows on there. Put your bow. And there's that. That's pretty. That is right pretty. I like it. I reckon I'm going to have to keep that. I like it. I do, I do. Sometimes I'll make something and I'll think, eh, it won't be too great. And then, I, then it comes out pretty neat. Just uh, try to poke this back in. Fold it back on there. And there's that. Now, here we go with this. This has got fake leaves in it and real ones from our tree. We'll see how it come out. Pieces of overflow there. Come on now. we go. I put a sticker in there too. Colorado sticker. Rocky Mountains. See, you see there's a fake fake one and then there's a real one. See how it's crumbled a little? It's going to be interesting with the real ones in it. I wish the light was better in here, but it's dark because it's cloudy outside. Let me, let me turn this one on up over here and see if it'll help any. things I made because I had the leftover extra. Let me get this out of the way here. Of it. You can see it better from the inside. You see them leaves? 
put a butterfly in there. Butterfly sticker. It's hard to see good in here, in it. But there's that. There's that sticker I put in there. There's a real tree leaves there. There's fake ones. Real ones. I like it. Oh, I put a turkey sticker in there too. I've forgotten about that. All right. And on the inside of that one, you can see a, a real leaf. It's still got some green in it. You're not supposed to use freshly, fresh plants in resin because they will decay and it'll mess up the looks of your resin. But yeah, there's where a bubble was right there. It left kind of a hole there, kind of a rough place. That happens sometimes when you got something stuck in your mold, like this leaf bubble of air gets trapped in there. There's two more places over here, but it's still pretty. It's still pretty. I like it. You see that gold leaf I put in there? Uh, just for a little dab of bling. A little dab of bling. It's got a little bit of that green sparkly in the bottom. A little bit of that. Oh, it's pretty. I like it. I do like it. It's fun making something like this. It's fun. Now, see if you can see this any better. I'll turn it up the right way. And get the light on it where you can see it better. They kind of crunched down when I poured the stuff in. They just kind of crunched down in the mold. I didn't want it to be all glommed together that thickly. But that's what happened. Now we hold it up here where you can see it now. And I put a few glow-in-the-dark beads in it. You see if you... I put a... You can see I dropped a brown bead in there. And there's a few glow-in-the-dark little tiny pebbles in, around in there. Should be. Uh, I like it. It's neato. And these little dried flowers I got from Timu, that's, I, I put those in there. But otherwise, it's just natural leaves and then the feather from the, from the little birdies. I like it. Just something to look at. Use it for a paperweight, I suppose. You can just grab it up like that, and there it is. You can put anything in the world in one of these. I like it. Now, now these are some overpour that I had because I had poured up some of these uh, reindeers. I did brown with the snowy horns and hooves. On the back of it, it's got that. And I put some flower stickers in there. See, flower stickers. Came out good. Pretty. Flower stickers. And here's a, I did something like this with the, just the 
clear with the sparkles. Ain't that pretty? I like this pattern, they're so pretty. Here's the back side of it. Oh, I like it. Pretty things. And here's one that's green. There was some of them I just rubbed that powder on in the mold with my finger. That's why it looks like that. Still pretty. Okay, now this jar here. I've been wanting to make one purple. And I put I put a little too much of the sparkles in it, the glitter, but it'll still be pretty. See, this is one you can just twist it like that. And it helps to come out. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's pretty. Oh. Oh. oh it's real smooth, the surface. Real smooth. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, here we go. Here we go. It seems like the, the glitter's concentrated. I mixed it up good, but it seems like it concentrated in that lid. Oh. Ooh, it's still soft. Well, too late now. Get this out. Come on, let go of it. Come on, let it go. Let go of it. Come on out. Come on, let go. It's not as dark as the lid because it's not as thick. See, this is a thicker concentration. That's why it's darker. Oh, look at that. Is that pretty or what? Oh. It's pretty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fold this back down. I'm gonna fold. Come on now. How many of y'all have ever lived in an old house? My dad's house was built in the, probably in the 1940s. Something like that. And uh, it was built in Imperial, Texas, and it had been built as one of uh, several or many of those, we call them lease houses, that rent about to them 
oil field workers to live in and their, their families to live in. And they were small. The rooms were kind of small. They weren't tiny, but they were kind of small. And they, they had uh, asbestos shingles on the siding. Well, my grandmother and her second husband lived in one of them lease houses, and my daddy pretty much grew up in that house. And uh, he went to school there in Imperial, Texas. That's how he knew my mom. Was, her family lived there, a tiny little town. I love that little town because that's where my family started. I have such wonderful memories of my, my granny and my kin folks there, and my mom and dad, my brothers. I, that, that little town's dear to my heart because of that. But anyway, when she, he died before, her, her second husband died of cancer, and so she lived there alone in that house as a widow woman. I don't know how many years my dad grew up, you know, without uh, without his real dad because she forbid him, forbid his real dad to come and see her. She was not because she dad's real dad was a good man, but Granny Granny Joyner she was an odd person, very eccentric. And that was because of the way she grew up, which is another story. But um, anyway, her second husband died. My dad wasn't very old when he died. And um, so her and my daddy lived in that house for many years. Well, anyway, and she lived there alone as a widow woman for many, many, many years after my dad got married and moved out and all. Well, she's the one that died in that house and I did a video on it called The Death House. Now, if you scroll down and look for my video about The Death House, I told the story about that. So anyway, anyway, after she died, he had that house moved from Imperial, Texas all the way to just north of Austin, all the way had that house moved. Now, I remember, well, I have a, a vague remembrance of that, I, of when that house was moved out there on some property that my dad had bought. He had bought six acres of land in a valley there, northwest of Leander, Texas. And uh, that's where he had that house moved, and we lived in that house for, oh, for decades. And that's a house that stunk from her dead body for a long time. <gasps> oh, it was, it was so nasty. But my dad, he, uh, he was a tightwad when it came to money. He was a tightwad. My, my brother called him Tetley Tightwad. <laughs> but after a few years, that smell, you didn't smell it no more. But sometimes when you opened a, a cabinet or a, a closet door, uh, you know, a cabinet or a drawer in the kitchen, you could catch a faint smell. Oh, so nasty. And, uh, but especially when it would rain. Now back then, that's when it rained fairly often in Central Texas. It, it's dry. It's, it's become dry last year. Years now, for years now, it's kind of a half dry climate over there now. But, but back when I was like 12, 13 years old, it, it rained pretty often. And when it would rain, that would bring out that stink from the woodwork. You could smell it. Oh, 
it took many, many years for that smell to go completely away where we didn't smell it. There's a black stain. There was a black stain on the bedroom where she laid and died on it. And my dad, that was my dad's room. He slept in that room. I'm glad I'd, I didn't have to live in that room. Ugh. He put carpet down over that stain. But anyway, I was going to say, have, has any of y'all ever lived in an old house that was old enough that it still had the, the metal screen on the windows? And those windows had the pulley system inside. We raised the window up. It had weights, iron weights attached to ropes. And that's how the windows, you raise the window up and they'd stay up because of the weights and the, the ropes. You pull the window down, you could adjust the window any height you wanted because those weights were how it worked in those windows. You know, it was kind of a real good idea, kind of a genius idea they had back in the old days making windows like that. That was pretty neat. But I was going to say, that's how old that house was. It still had all them old-timey features like that. And uh, and the roof went out over far enough that the eaves sheltered the windows. So when it rained, you could sit there by the window with the window open and look out there and enjoy the sound of the rain and I used to do that and I enjoyed there was something about that I liked just open the window sit there and just listen to the rain pattering down on the tree leaves and everything and I just wonder how many of y'all ever experienced that and you know lived in an old house like that we had screen doors I love that. Good old fashioned screen doors on the front door, back door. I like that. And the kitchen was, uh, the kitchen and the cabinets were all original and old. And uh, I don't know what the original colors were in the kitchen, but Dad told me that in the 1950s, my granny Joyner, she had uh, she had redecorated the kitchen and put in that uh, the pink on the cabinets and uh, that pink paneling stuff with the black trim at the top on the walls. So it was a pink kitchen with the black trim. That's that was a style in the 1950s, and that's what color it was. And the linoleum on the floor had that old-time linoleum on the floor. Of course, that got so old after so many years that that linoleum was tearing up pieces off the floor. And finally, after a few decades, we uh, put some old vinyl flooring down on top of we, well, we chiseled up what we could of that, most of that uh, old linoleum, and we just rolled out a big piece of a solid piece of vinyl flooring on, on there and, and taped the edges down with duct tape. <laughs> Poor folks' method. But that was an old house. That reminds me of my dad is sitting here thinking about this cloudy weather we're having today and I, the memory came back of sitting there at the windows listening to it rain, watching it rain. I miss my dad. I sure miss my dad. I don't, I don't miss that old house because it was gross. <laughs> but I do like the old-fashioned features of old houses. I like them. That's why I like to watch the videos about old abandoned houses, especially old farm houses. I love those styles. I love it. It makes me feel at home when I 
watch watch them go through those houses and the wide trim around the the windows and the wide baseboards and uh, wide trim around the inner doorways and the way they used to do things. I, I like that. And them good old window screens that used to be made out of metal, they was a lot better than this, this plastic window screens nowadays that are so delicate, it, it's ridiculous. But anyway, that's how it is. I, I like the old timey stuff. I just wanted to share that with y'all, and I just wonder how many of y'all ever, how many of you ever lived in an old timey house like that? I'd love to hear about it, what you liked about it, and uh, stuff like that. But anyway. Keep on crafting, y'all. Bye.